Rock is often ideal as a building material. Underground power stations, storage facilities, communication tunnels and mines are currently being constructed all over the world. The Bolman water supply project is one of many examples of this type of underground construction. To supply the southernmost province of Sweden with fresh water, a rock tunnel 80 kilometers long is being made to carry raw water from Lake Bolman on the South Swedish plateau to a reservoir and purification plant at the southern end of the tunnel and from this plant by pipeline to densely populated cities and communities. The main tunnel, which is unlined, is being laid at a depth of between 30 and 80 meters below ground level. The rock is removed via 13 adits situated six to seven kilometers apart. This is the work cycle in the main tunnel. Surveying, drilling with an electrohydraulic drilling unit, charging and priming, blasting, ventilation of blasting gases and dust, scaling, mucking with an electrically powered machine, the Heg loader, removal and discharging by the shuttle train system, also electrically powered. The work cycle is repeated over and over again, and there are two shifts per day. Now let us go underground from one of the adits and take a closer look at a team during one of these work cycles. Developments in recent years have brought increased mechanization to underground working. This has not only resulted in an increase in the capacity, there have also been considerable advances in creating an acceptable human working environment. An environment in which the risk of an accident has been made as small as possible. An environment which will not inflict any complex industrial disease or injury in the short or long term. The combined use of electric and hydraulic power underground has proved to be the best way of fulfilling these requirements. But for underground mechanization to be successful, it must be possible for every stage of the work cycle to be carried out with equal efficiency. The various items of equipment must be matched to each other in such a way that workers can make the best possible use of the full potential of the machines. The main tunnel will have an inclination of between 0.1 and 0.15% and an area of about 7.5 square meters. A laser is used to achieve the greatest possible precision in marking out the direction of the tunnel. The drilling pattern consists of a 102 millimeter large hole for the parallel hole cut and 36 to 38 small holes 41 millimeters in diameter. A drilling depth of 3.7 meters gives an advance of 3.5 meters per round. The Atlas Copco Promic electrohydraulic drilling unit is fitted with three booms R315H, each of which carries a COP1038 hydraulic rock drill. This type of boom has automatic parallel holding and is equipped with a hydraulic feed with anti-jamming feed control to prevent the drill bit from jamming in inferior rock. The drilling machine automatically reverses when the full drilling depth is reached. The COP1038 hydraulic drilling machine gives a penetration rate of 1.8 meters per minute in the granite bedrock. It takes about one hour to complete the drilling for one round with this machine. The explosives used are Nitronobel Dynamix, Nabite and Gurite. To prevent the firing system being activated by the electrical installations in the tunnel or by thunderstorms, the non-L, non-electrical system is used combined with a safety fuse. The round detonates in 15 intervals with delays of 25 to 150 milliseconds.
After ventilation of blasting gases and dust, the Hagelund's Hag loader starts the mucking operation and the rock is carried out by the shuttle train transport system. These machines are also electrically powered and their power requirements are matched to those of the drilling equipment so that the same supply can be used for drilling and mucking. The electric power is delivered to the tunnel faces at a high voltage via distribution switchboards. It is converted to a low voltage by transformers which are moved as work proceeds and which are installed in niches specially cut every 500 meters. The electric power then goes via aluminium low voltage cables and earth fault circuit breaker and connection cable up to the connection socket of the loading or drilling machine. The shuttle train is powered through the loading machine connection. The rock that was flung out by the blast is cleared from the tunnel floor. The gathering blades of the Hague loader collect the material like a bulldozer, clearing the entire tunnel width. Instead of a bucket, the Hague loader has digging arms, which transfer the rock to a conveyor belt. The rock is carried back over the machine and is deposited in the car behind it. The Hag loader advances steadily into the rock pile, clearing the rock at a rate of two cubic meters per minute. The steady operating tempo of the Hag loader contributes greatly to improving the working environment of its operator. The operator stands on a step with a good view of the working area and at a safe distance from sliding rocks in the pile. Rock dust and blasting gas from the rock pile is controlled by water from a sprinkler system on the loading machine. The shuttle train is made up of one or more cars with a conveyor at the bottom of each car. The conveyor transfers material from one car to the next until the entire train is full. In conjunction with the loader, the shuttle train works like a conveyor belt and completely does away with the need for car changing facilities, passing niches, double tracks and any other supplementary equipment. This is an even greater advantage if any niches have to be subsequently refilled with concrete. The track is in 10 meter long rail sections. The rails are successively extended during loading by means of sliding rails known as Omega rails located on top of the permanent sections and guided forward by the loading machine. When the full length of the Omega rails has been used, giving an extension of 10 meters, a new permanent rail section is inserted. The digging arms of the Hag loader can be used for much of the heavy, time-consuming work that used to be done by hand, such as lifting rails and rail sections, cleaning track, digging drainage ditches, clearing the tunnel floor and so on. The rail sections which are prefabricated at the transfer station 
are brought in hanging on the sides of the shuttle cars. The rail section is guided into position and secured by means of an impact wrench connected to the hydraulic system of the loader. The Omega rails are placed on top of the inserted rail section and are guided into the loose rock by the loading machine. Where very long distances are involved, this work can be performed by the loading machine operator alone while the shuttle train is away being emptied. The capacity of each shuttle train car is 11.5 cubic meters. The capacity of the shuttle train can easily be altered by increasing or reducing the number of cars from one to six or even eight. And with eight cars, the train can remove 85 to 90 cubic meters or 175 tons of rock at a time. To direct the material on emptying, various types of chute plate can be fitted to the drawbars. No other emptying equipment is needed. Simply connect the electric power and all the shuttle train cars are empty in one to one and a half minutes. Conveyors at the bottom of the cars are driven by electric motors with special couplings via roller chains, drive shafts, worm gear units and the sprocket that drives the chains. The rock is emptied into a storage hopper that has been blasted out at the transfer station. From there, it is taken up to the surface by rubber-tired trucks. On many sites, the need has arisen to carry wet or dry mixed concrete into the tunnel. For example, to refill niches, to reinforce rock, or to lay a concrete tunnel floor. This can be done with a shuttle train without any additional equipment. The working principle of the shuttle train has also proved highly efficient for tunneling with full-face drilling machines.
There are many advantages in the combination of electricity and hydraulics underground. Lower energy consumption, higher capacity, better working environment. This is now established practice underground and it has come to stay. With its gathering blades and a pulling power of 12 tons in the four hydraulic motors, the 10HR clears the bottom of the drift like a veritable bulldozer. Quick and efficient clearing, which, at the same time, provides a firm foundation for the heavily laden transport vehicles. Since the 10HR is electrically powered, no exhaust gases are formed and consequently the demands on ventilation are not so exacting. The Hegg loader works gently and continuously. It has a loading capacity of three cubic meters per minute. The material is always handled the shortest path from the rock pile to the transport vehicle. The high penetration force and hydrostatic transmission imply that the 10HR can be kept firmly pressed into the muck pile all the time. This means that the capacity is increased even more. Caving in of the material is actually an advantage when this loading technique is employed. The operator is stationed some four meters away from any caving in of the material and has an excellent view of the entire working area. Smooth and gentle lever movements are all that is needed in order to operate a Hegg loader, something that the driver really appreciates and very quickly learns. To reduce the formation of dust and explosive gases, the material is flushed with water throughout the entire loading procedure. The material is transferred to the transport vehicle by means of a conveyor, the unloading height of which can be varied. With the standard conveyor, the 10HR Hegg loader matches the Hegg hauler truck, since this is filled by means of a conveyor in the bottom. Loading with a conveyor results in less spilling, better filling and gentler treatment of the transport vehicle. The system of digging arms used for clearing makes it possible to get at all loose material in all corners. Loose blocks can be broken off the rock walls up to a height of one and a half meters.